good evening ladies and gentlemen it's a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker today who is going to talk to us about defense in depth dr rajendran t he is an associate professor at department of ai and data science at savita school of engineering chennai thank you for joining us sir we can start with the today's presentation sir over to you, you can proceed dr rajendran sir yeah thank you sir thank you arish thank you so much sir so thanks for given this uh, opportunity uh, i would like to thank uh, ifrp management and i especially thank to dr swaminathan he is my well known friend friend he is provided this opportunity to present in this uh, a very uh, uh centric forum engineers and uh, very closed group forum so i am very much happy to uh, present the session in this uh, a professional forum Good evening to all so today uh, i am going to present in a topic called uh, cyber security uh, there is a, a approach a intense approach in the cyber security protection that is called defense in depth approach okay it is very uh, optimistic and very advanced uh, strategic model and approach which is going to be practicing in today's uh, most of the corporates and most of the industries they are going to be already started to implement this approach uh, to protect their resources in a very uh, protective manner okay so they are uh, very Uh, what is that they are very keen about the security those who are very uh, concentrating very uh, concern about the security so they are all already started to implement this approach called defense in depth approach in the cyber security so let me start uh, our session with through the topic so this is all the takeaways today so we will start with the cyber security overview and threats and uh, what are all the three pillars of the information security and uh, Uh, what are the different defense approaches are there and we will see in overview of defense in depth okay so first what is a cyber security so i think so everyone know about it okay so it is because this is a buzzword uh, in this today's world okay everybody is uh, talk about this okay uh, we are in very uh, uh, vulnerable situation uh, because uh, we doesn't know when our mobile is get hacked when our devices get compromised we doesn't know who is watching our data who is monitoring our data who is monitoring our activity these are all very a big question mark is today's world okay so we are all almost aware and we are all very concerned about the cyber security today we are started to implement uh, uh, the tools and technologies which is uh, re required for this protecting our data and devices okay so like uh, anti virus softwares anti uh, uh what is that um, internet security softwares we started implemented it so generally the cyber security means so whatever the resources which is exist in the cyber space okay so whatever the resources which is existing in the cyber space the protecting the cyber space is going to be called as the cyber security so we are going to have we are have a set of practices to defending our resources so from the unauthorized access and the, from malicious attacks from the outside or inside both can be done okay not only the outside attack even the inside attacks is also there okay through some uh, malicious activity or malfunctioning of the internal softwares so it may happen okay so the internal attacks may also happen so we are going to be defending from these all attacks our resources in the sense of our mobile devices okay our laptops networks okay so all the other resources which is relying on computing is going to be called as a cyber space when we are protecting this cyber space devices is going to be called as a cyber security so then these are all the major uh, threat uh, so what is it uh, so they are going to be categorized in this way okay so generally we are categorizing in this uh, any one malware intrusion or blocking uh, threat okay so this is the major threats we are facing today for example if you take a malware ransomware attack is that it's very serious attack we are facing all the industries are facing today ransomware okay so we are they are injecting some uh, malware and they are encrypting the entire systems and they are going to be uh, sorry yeah encrypting the entire datas in their 
uh, resources, industry resources, and they are uh, blackmailing. They are going to be asking huge amount to decrypt the data. So ransomware attack. The ransomware attack is going to be done through injecting some malwares in our system, and they are doing the uh, what is the de encryption process? Okay, so that injecting the malwares, then malicious codes, injecting the viruses. Okay, so these all categorize under the malware threats. Next one is intrusions. Okay, so mostly they are trying to get gain of our uh, gain the access of our system. Mostly they are trying to get the access. They are gain the access to our systems. So that is called intrusions. Okay, uh, they are breaking. They are trying to breaking our uh, system production, and they are going to be trying to access gain access to our systems. This is called intrusions in the way of. Uh, or by giving the phishing attacks, okay, so email phishing, URL phishing, so like that they are going to be giving some URLs and they are trying to intrude in your systems by using the offer links and all, okay. So then through the intrusions also they are trying to gain access by uh, trying the passwords, okay, they are trying to change the passwords and they are trying to get the Wi-Fi passwords, Wi-Fi access, trying to get network access. So these are all uh, things is going to be comes under the intrusions. Okay, then at last the uh, threat is blocking. Okay, so that is non-available of resources. Okay, so blocking the availability of the resources. For example, uh, denial of service attack. Okay, so it is a very uh, major uh, cause. Okay, so they are making flooding on our resources like uh, uh, ping, uh, ping, death, uh, ping to the death uh, flooding attacks. Okay, so then uh, there are a lot of attacks is there. Flooding attacks is there. Even TCP flooding attacks is there. By doing this kind of flooding attacks and uh, trying to make your system crash. Okay, so like uh, even hardware also they will make it to crash by overloading the RAMs, by overloading the cache memories. Okay, so they are just trying to block and crash our systems. Okay. So this is called blocking. Even your uh, passwords, when they're go trying, when they changed your passwords of your any uh, social media or email passwords, that's also in kind of a yeah, blocking. Okay. So these are all major threats is there. Now, so when we have, when we are having this kind of huge threats, okay. So what we have to do, we have to be ensure the uh, some basic requirements. Okay. So these are all the three important basic requirements is given by the information security. These are all called pillars of information security. If it is any uh, industry or if it is any software, even a small software, if you are providing it. Okay. So even if it is an app or if it is a web page, whatever it may be. So if the software or the device, or if it may be any kind of computing entity, it should ensure these three important things. Okay. So these are all the three major important uh, requirement, all the Devices, computing devices, and computing uh, in uh, applications should ensure it. One is confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Simply, we can say CIA. Okay. So by ensuring this, so we will make a very protected environment because this is the basic requirements. Without this, you could not able to do any service. You could not able to provide any service to the society or any customers. Okay. So this is the major and very important three aspects. All the information. Uh, system should follow it then so we have a threats like malware intrusion and uh, blocking attacks is there okay then we have to ensure some requirements like confidentiality encryption and decryption then we have to ensure the availability of the resources okay always the device should be available always the software should be available so availability is always important whenever we want the resource 24 bar 7 we need to access the resource okay so then we need to create some protected environment uh, for our users okay so that is a major objective of each and every uh, providers uh, each and every developers each and every organizations even our own personal also so today the uh, defense approaches is also needed for personal also because we are exposed to the uh, what is it we are exposed we are already exposed we are in the digital era uh, we are always uh, converge with a lot of devices okay so that is very important so even each and every uh, person is needed to be secure our things so, so here so we are going to discuss the defense approaches in the industry perception so how the approaches will be followed in the industries and corporates and the major uh, um, companies. So what practices the institutes is going to be followed. 
So initially, they started with the perimeter approach. Perimeter approach is the beginning of that is uh, one decade before they will use this kind of perimeter security approach and all. Then now we go for that. Uh, today we are going to using the layered security approach because we have a lot of flaws is there in the perimeter security approach. Then slowly realized and we are getting to this layered security approach. Now we go for some advanced and strategic approach over the layered. Layered security approach is called defense in depth approach. Let me see one by one. Okay, so the first one is perimeter security approach. So only the network boundary is going to be protected. Okay, only the network security, the network boundary will be protected. We have organizational systems like routers, uh, devices, so that the devices which is related to the network. Okay, routers. And then we have a servers. Okay, so this is the perimeter. Okay, so that uh, the boundary between the uh, privately owned and the network access for the public. This boundary is going to be called as a perimeter. So this perimeter has been protected with help of these devices like firewall. Okay, so through the authentication, VPN services, and intrusion prevention system, intrusion detection system. So these are all various. Uh, uh, technologies which is used for securing our boundary, okay, network boundary. This is called perimeter security approach. This is very, very old model, okay. So that is the factor. The perimeter approach is not at all is fit for today's uh, world. So now we go for the next uh, level of uh, securing approach is called layered security approach. So here, what is the factor here means so that um, protection will be divided into number of layers okay so the production is uh, done in different levels okay so it start from the starting level level one so then it is going like this okay so we have to protect up to this level and also in the reverse way okay so we have started with this policies and we have to protect up to the lower level called data okay so we have to start from physical level and up to a small data also need to be scanned so this is called layered approach. So in this uh, layers, layered approach, what will happen means, so we have segregated the uh, devices and we have segregated the applications in layers. Okay, so that is an important factor here. Okay, so the working uh, mechanism or the, the tools and devices and even the people, those who are uh, participating with the computing environment, they are going to be segregating into different levels that is called layers. Then we are going to be ensure the production on each layer. Okay, we are going to be enforcing, we are going to be enforcing the uh, security on each layer. So that is the major factor here. Okay, so here it is started, these are all the different layers, different levels, they are going to be ensuring the security. Uh, first one is uh, policies. Uh, as an organization, we have to establish the policies and procedures and awareness about uh, uh, what we need to be follow for our organization. That awareness, uh, uh, not only making the policy and keep it in a record, it no way useful. Okay, we have to bring these procedures and we have to bring these policies to each and every employee. The knowledge transfer is very much important. Uh, we have to be transferred the knowledge about the policies and security procedures, what we have to be follow that should be disseminated to all the employees and all each and every level of people those who are using. Okay, so that has to be defined here, define and disseminate. This is very important. Okay, next is physical layer. So he, in this physical layer, it all about uh, uh, physical production, like keeping the security, keeping the gate, protecting the unauthorized access, physical access should be protected, keeping the camera, Okay, so these are all the things is going to be bring in the physical level. Okay, so no one is entering into the uh, resource without the permission. Okay, so we have to be protecting physical level. Okay, so physical entry by the other unauthorized persons. Next one is perimeter, our organizational area. So in this perimeter, it is covered about the devices which is comes around that uh, our resources computing resources okay so in this computing resource for example you have a server room so how the server room has to be protected how the network resources have been protected okay so this is all about the perimeter okay the router okay then the the entry level router okay so that edge uh, edge devices it is going to be called as a edge devices network edge devices has to be protected through perimeter approach Next, we have to come for network. Okay, so each and every devices which is connected with the network. So intermediate devices, switches, 
bridges, okay, so all the devices, Wi-Fi, access points, so everything has been ensured, okay, we have to be, give the password for each and every access points, we have to be, give the proper SSID, even if you want to, you can disable the SSID broadcast, so like this, we have to ensure the security on each and every network equipment is called network uh, level uh, establishment, then host level, host level in the sense, uh, your computers, each and every computers, what the users are using, the employees, the clients, the customers, cloud-based customers, okay, uh, in-house uh, employees, okay, so then vendors, so how the host has been used, okay, so what uh, what kind of security establishment you have to done, like a host-based firewall need to be installed, Okay, then host based intrusion direction will be installed, then making some tweaks in the operating system. Okay, like unauthorized access need to be protected, unauthorized settings need to be avoided. We have to be hide all the advanced settings and all. Okay, like this, we have to be protect the host. Okay, each and every host need to be configured here properly. Okay, like uh, protecting the network uh, changes. Okay, so like that we can protect uh, from the user level, okay, we can keep the uh, some critical uh, configuration settings only for the admin level. We can protect the uh, critical configuration settings for this user level. We have to make this kind of setting policies for host also, okay, how we protect the host and all. Next application, what application they are using it. Each and every application need to be scanned when it is protected applications only will be permitted. You could not allow the users to install the all and all apps what they want. We have to be protect this the unauthorized installation of applications. It is very, very important. It, through this app installation only, the intrusions, then malware injection, everything has been done through this app layer only. So we have to be very keen about it. And then we have to follow that OWASP followed applications only. We need to be allowed to install in our organization. So we have to ensure this whether the applications what we have used it is well verified well protected okay they, these apps only is going to be installed all the other apps need to be blocked next data each and every level of data so what data they are going to be using unnecessary data outliers data uh, outdated data so these all outliers need to be removed and only need to be keep the reliable and protected data need to be ensured even the data should be protected so what it is in the database or when it is in a transfer mode it should be protected, okay? So this is all about it. Net layered security approach. So, so it is all about level-wise security establishment. So these are all what I have discussed earlier. Next, I have to tell about defense in depth, okay? So this is the last approach that is uh, currently uh, what we are practicing in the organizations, okay? So this approach is uh, very much needed Okay, even you see, uh, defense in depth is not a new, completely new method, not like that, okay. Now we are going to see the defense in depth approach. It is not a completely new approach, okay. So it is the approach which is followed in the previous one, okay. You see the layered security approach is followed from the uh, perimeter approach, okay. So then we are in, enforcing the security in layer level. Then this defense in depth uh, is includes all the layered security approach it is not a new one okay so first we have to understand so the depth in defense in depth approach is includes the layered security approaches so what practices we are following in the layered security approaches the same practices and same methods we are going to be following in the defense in depth also in the same level we are going to be uh, make it into level and we are going to be enforcing the security in level wise so everything sh should be followed in defense in depth approach also but what is there what is more in the defense in depth that is the point here so here what we are going to do means so in this defense in depth so we are going to be make the same practices in broader way okay so we have to be make the same approaches same practices in more strategic way Okay, we are going to be uh, make it very focused. Okay, so we are going to be make us very broader. Okay, for example, follow up things. Okay, so one after another, the incidents. Okay, if, for example, if any incident is going to be happen, one malicious incident is going to be vulnerable incident is going to be happen. The incident has been blocked by the intrusion prevention system. Okay, so the intrusion has been arrived to our network. The intrusion prevention system is identify the prevention and uh, uh, that uh, direct intrusion has been detected and prevented by the IPS, intrusion prevention system is handled it. But after that, what you're going to do? 
so that is called strategy okay so after the prevention okay so what you going to do with the incident okay so we have to analyze the incident we have to take it what type of uh, incident it is why that attack has been happened so what type of attack it is how seriously you are taking that uh, each and every incident what is happening to that okay so happening to our organization networks or any resources so we have to be take it very intense manner we have to be analyze and take a steps in very analyze uh, very intensive manner this is called defense in depth it is like military way it is like military way so that is the word we have taken why they are using using this means defense means so because it is in a military way okay so they are going to be make it very strong okay so they are make it very depth each and every aspects of the network uh, uh, entity okay all the entities in the uh, in the industry okay all the computing entities in the industry have to be very intensively we have to be take care of it okay so if you see that environment today uh, you see that uh, this kind of defense in depth is very much useful for the uh, industrial control system based okay so ics based companies industrial control systems okay so here you see the both hand in hand uh, the information technology and industrial control systems like iot and all okay so it is like a boon okay if you see it it is like a boon for the industry but what happened there is lot of glitches is there lot of security holes are there okay how we going to be getting monitored each and every system each and every industrial system okay because the information technology is almost uh, uh, related to all the industries like for example iot okay if you take iot so all the industry now they are using iot based uh, controls okay so even if you production units or manufacturing units all the units they are going to be involved they are going to be integrating lot of iot devices this all iot devices is network based that is a major security flaw is there okay so there is lot of previous incidents is going to be happen we have lot of evidences how the iot devices are compromised okay so how these things has to be protected okay so that is very very important okay so each and every uh, control system need to be very carefully scanned because a small uh, what is that small computing devices like iot sensors and all not embedded with is2 security but we have to be take care of this small sensors also okay so because that security hole will create a major issue for the organization so this depth and very intense uh, military based uh, Uh, what is the term has been taken as military but uh, what is that very intense and very uh, uh, focused policies has been created and uh, the follow ups each and every incident has to be follow up and uh, it have a very depth of analyzing the particular incidents and production has to be established the policies has to be created for each and every things that's what again we are saying it it is very strategic it is very strategic okay so that broader in the sense how we are defining it but we have to be more strategic on the each production methods okay then the defense in depth approach will involve all the aspects okay so it is uh, pro, uh, involve all the aspects like people technology the operations of the company and uh, the awareness what we need to bring it so everything has been involved and has been integrated within it okay so it protects each and every entity and it is involves all the aspects of the organization okay so that is the major thing then it is also provide security awareness okay so then the design controls and uh, it provides the security awareness and uh, design controls which is needed for the organization that will be helpful for the uh, that will be very helpful for the industry people okay so it is not only providing the controls it is also providing the awareness okay how you make it knowledge transfer to the employees it out that knowledge transfer to the each and every stakeholders that is also make it very clear in this defense in depth method okay even a customers if they are using your uh, tool means even a customer is using your device means we have to be make awareness how much uh, the security has to be enforced on the particular device we have to be make it uh, very sure about it okay then uh, what are the strategy we have talk about strategy right what are the strategy has been include means monitoring uh, thoroughly monitoring each and every aspect of it and alerting whenever it is needed we need to alert the users we need to alert the admins we need to alert the management people so different level the alerting system and monitoring system need to be enforced emergency response if any incident is happening if any hack has been happened any malicious activities happen 
how we are going to be response to the emergency situations even the natural disaster if it is anything happen how we going to be recover from the disaster even your system is crash if the server is crashed even a natural calamity is going to be happen natural disaster is going to happen how we going to be recover from this disasters okay it may be a server crash or it may be a natural uh disasters okay we have to be make a clear plan on it okay how to recover from this kind of disasters even the uh, ransomware it is completely uh, encrypted the whole organizational data it's also a disaster how we going to be recover from it okay only the authorized person activity how how we will make it then we need a very strong forensic analysis okay so we have to be make it very clearly analyze of uh, for example if a device is theft from the particular organization so how the theft has to be handled how the forensics has to be done how they are going to be trace it and how they are going to be get back the data okay so how they are going to be erasing the data without the sensible data is going to be reached to the outside person this sort of kind of forensic analysis also is going to be included in the defense in depth strategy than the layered security approaches and perimeter security approaches this is all about today's discussion okay so if you have any doubts please uh, ping me to the uh, my ping me uh, please reply to me please ask uh, through the email id on doll okay so that uh, will be definitely addressed okay so thank you all thanks uh, once again i thanks uh, ifrt management and uh, dr swamnan sir and uh, the host arish sir and all for uh, giving me the time and organizing and uh, uh, make it a wonderful session and presentation uh, in this topic called uh, defense in depth thank you all thank you so much rajendran sir we are really glad to receive your inputs on the topic defense in depth i request everyone to watch this guest lecture thank you so much and thank you one more time dr rajendran sir we will end this meeting thank you so much thank you arif